Shalom lachem, brothers and sisters. We begin a new week in walking with the Lord, with our Heavenly Father. And we continue to study this such important subject that is to listen and to be guided by the Holy Spirit. We spoke about the fruit of love a lot last week. In the chapter of love, we spoke about the fruit of the Spirit. And now we arrive at this new subject that we started last week. That is the subject of hearing the guidance of the Holy Spirit that speaks to us through the Word of God and enlivens it in us. We have this need to walk with the Lord and this experience in hearing the guidance of the this soft voice that is in us when the Holy Spirit speaks to us. And as we listen and obey more, then we accumulate experience and, and our walking with the Lord advances. And while the emphasis on is on hearing the, the Word of God through His Word, from His Word, I must say that the Holy Spirit and God speak to us in many other ways. Some are direct, specific uh, warnings. I remember the warning that the grandfather of Shiria received when he was driving in Tiberias and he came to a junction and the Holy Spirit told him to stop. And there was no traffic light at that junction and he just stopped without any other reason except the warning from the Holy Spirit. And right when he stopped, a truck came rolling down the hill in Tiberias, came and cr crashed into the junction. They It lost its brakes and continued straight and rammed into the market and people were die people died and, and people were injured also. And the Holy Spirit warned him at that very moment and some other time when he was sitting in his garden at the bottom of the hill, he was reading his Bible. And suddenly the Holy Spirit told him, get up. He got up out of his chair and stood up and then a stone that was rolling down the hill behind him came and crashed into the chair, completely destroyed it, and continued further to roll. And the devil tried to kill him once again in these two cases. The Holy Spirit warned him very, very clearly. And of course we have dreams and visions in the day, visions in the night, and prophecies or speaking in tongues or interpreting tongues and many other ways how the war Lord chooses to guide us and speak to us. He is not limited. Yet it is still important that we know and recognize Him and let us not be led astray. Just like we will continue now and learn. So in the Gospel of John chapter 14 verses 25 through 26 we see the importance of the Holy Spirit as the first source for guidance in our life, and that is the Word of God. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 25 and 26. These things I have spoken unto you, while ye abiding with you. But the Comforter, even the Holy Spirit, whom my Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and bring you to remembrance all the things that I said unto you. So the Holy Spirit also teaches us, when we read the Word of God, we don't understand everything immediately. Not at all. And that's why we also read the Word of God again and again throughout the years. Book after book, verse after verse, chapter after chapter. I, every time I start reading, I mark at the beginning of the book. I mark the date and the year and the month when I start to read this book over again. And I proceed in advance daily reading in the New Testament, daily reading in the Bible, with my family, with myself. And throughout the years, the Holy Spirit opens things up and teaches also things that I do not understand in the fifth time. Sometimes in, when you read it for the seventh or eighth time, you'll understand it. And the Holy Spirit comes to teach you and opens it up in different contexts of the Word of God. But the Holy Spirit is the teacher. He will teach you. If you think that it's enough to go to biblical school and listen to some theologian, theological 
lecture. I don't speak against biblical schools, but they have a tremendous responsibility because what they teach, certain schools don't teach things that are true. There are places and seminars where a man can come in as a believer and exit without without belief because they confused him and destroyed his faith. I don't say this, but someone else who knows a lot more and is much more studious than me, Derek Prince, he spoke about these pro pro problems. We need the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. We have the gifts of teaching, we have a leader, we have a pastor, and we are also being fed, but it's not enough. Our daily reading, the Holy Spirit, our teacher that speaks to us and leads us. So he's also a teacher, and he also reminds us the Word of God when we need it. When we come into a certain situation, and now I need to know this verse or that verse, or what do I need to implement? And the word, he reminds me. I remember when I was young, standing in front of decisions that I have to make that could determine how many years I would serve extra time in the army. And the verse that came to my mind was the verse when Yeshua says, don't be like this man that decides I will go to this and that city and I will do business and come with profit. And say, only if God wants me to do this, to this to come out, then we'll do this. And committing to many years in the army, you need to ask God, what does God want? And that's what I did. And also the Lord guided me. In this specific case, he gave me a visual sign, just like he gave Gideon. I will not elaborate more than that right now. So he teaches and he also reminds us the word of God regarding what to do. And it's something very precious. This is a reality that whoever does not have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit cannot know this. In the first letter of John, in chapter 2, verse 27, that very same John once again speaks to us and he says the following thing. First letter of John, chapter 2, verse 27. And as for you, the anointing which you have received, that is the Holy Spirit, the anointing which you received, of him abideth in you, and ye need not that anyone teach you, but as his anointing teacheth you concerning all things, and is true, and it is not a lie. And even as it is taught you, ye abide in him. So the Holy Spirit, the anointing, it teaches us. When he says you don't need that anyone teach you, it does not contradict what it says in Ephesians chapter 4 when we have gifts of, of teaching and, and we have prophets and, and evangelizers and, and pastors. God definitely spoke through teachers, but there's no replacement for the Holy Spirit that is inside. And if you hear a certain teaching and the Holy Spirit inside you does not give you the okay for that, then leave it. Don't adopt it. Don't listen to it. It is very important what the Holy Spirit leads you inside you. You can pray about it and, and ask. Maybe it's your stubbornness or your pride or other negative things that influence you and, and create difficulty to understand or to accept things that are been told to you. But the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, He is a teacher. And also in verse 26, he says, And these things I have written unto you concerning them that would lead you astray. So we need the Holy Spirit to be kept from the people that will lead us astray, from the false teachers, false prophets, false messiahs that will rise up at the last time, just like it says in Matthew chapter 24. We need to be careful. We, need, we want the Holy Spirit to be our teacher be our reminder. We want the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire that walk before us and lead us and guide us when we are going through all the dangers and all the mines of death that are laid to the left and to the right of us. But He brings us through all the way, all the way through the narrow path that leads us to the Kingdom in Heaven. So thank God for the Holy Spirit. Let us open our heart 
and be and ask to be filled with him. I wish you all a blessed day in the name of Yeshua our Lord. Amen.